Okay, so welcome back to ChatGPT training for non-fiction writers. In this video, we're going to go through how to take the content that you've created in ChatGPT, edit it up, so go through a process of firstly removing all the repetition, tidying the, the, the manuscript up, and then going through another process of rephrasing and polishing the manuscript so it reads really well, and also then how to check check the content for the AI content detectors and also do a plagiarism check before you hit that publish button. Okay, so once again, if you've got any questions whatsoever, please do not hesitate in commenting below or sending me an email at tim at timcooper.au and also the links to the previous videos in this training series will also be below. Okay, enough said, let's get into it. In this lesson, we're going to go through the editing process from the first edit through to polishing up the manuscript, including rephrasing and reworking the, the manuscript, checking it for plagiarism, and then checking it with the AI detectors. Okay, so here I am in the, in the manuscript. Now, I don't know whether you noticed in the last lesson, but when I generated this first part, the uh, the information that came out wasn't very good. I don't know what had happened. It was, it was talking about video creation, not about essential oils. So you've got to watch it sometimes. Sometimes chat GPT can hiccup. So I've just come through and I regenerated the introduction section. And what I do in the first edit, the first edit is very basic. I'm just going to read through the AI generated content. And I'm going to check for any repetition. And then I'm going to review that repetition. And I'm going to choose the best parts of the repeated stuff and, and get rid of the other repeated information so that I'm only keeping the best information. Sometimes when there's been bullet points and lists, and there's been a couple of items repeated in both lists, but there's other different points, then I'll combine the lists into one. But overall, we want to remove any repetition and then we just want to chop out any content that doesn't fit, doesn't work. You've got to be very aggressive with your editing, especially with, with AI generated content, because it can put a little bit of waffle in there and everything else. And you just want to make sure that, that every word that's on your page is there for a reason. Now we call this AI assisted because we use ChatGPT to generate all our all our information, all our content, which is great. See, that's that's the beauty of AI assisted because we're not sitting there with writer's block. We're not pulling our hair out looking at a, a blinking cursor on the screen. We've got content to work with straight away that we can rework, that we can massage, that we can polish, that we can add our own stories to, you know, add our own voice to. So it's not a it's not a matter of just simply generating stuff out of AI and then just putting it straight out as published. Okay, we use this as our framework, as our foundation, and we work from there. So we just read through and just see what it's looking like. Now, also during this process, during this first process, if I'm reading through and, I, and I'm cutting a bunch of information out and I'm getting rid of repetition and combining lists and that sort of stuff. As I'm reading through, if I find that there is a gap in the information, then I'll go back to ChatGPT and get it to generate information to fill that gap. So during this first edit process, I'm also going back and forth from ChatGPT, prompting for more examples, prompting for case studies, prompting for whatever is going to fill that gap and make sure that the question is being answered and make sure that as the reader is going through, as the questions are coming to their mind, the answers are also flowing from the page. Okay, so this is not about you know, how many words can we get and how fat can we make our book and can we pat it out. We don't want to pat it out. We, we don't want any fluff. We don't want any filler. We want to, we want to be as concise as possible. We want to use as little words as possible to get the meaning across so that they, they can read 
and go out, take action, implement, and get a result. Okay, so this it's not a matter of the number of words. The number of words is irrelevant. I can tell you now from the from the past books I've written, they've ended up with a larger word count than the original manuscript that I generated with ChatGPT because of this process, because of going through, say, a 30,000 word manuscript. And it doesn't matter whether I you know whether I chopped out 5,000 words of repetition, just by going through, identifying any questions, filling those gaps with the answers, the manuscript grows naturally and it's good quality. So I just want to put that in. Same here. I don't really want to talk about how the book is the uh, like is divided into four sections. I think all I want to do is just to say what's what's covered in the book. So I'm just going to sort of do a bit, bit of chopping here. So introduction. I don't even really think we need this at all. I'm just going to chop out this entire section because it doesn't read well and it's not needed anyway. So once we get it to the point, now I haven't done any editing as far as rephrasing, rewording, reworking the sentences. All I'm doing is working with the raw content that came from ChatGPT and just making sure that it flows and it's got the information in there that I want. Now, looking at AI detection, if I if I take this and I and I copy this chapter, okay, and I put it into an AI detector, this one is called Content at Scale. It's quite a good content detector. Uh, it's one that a lot of people also recommend. And let's see. So straight out of ChatGPT 3.5 it's already saying it's unclear. And the reason why it's unclear is because of that priming instruction that we gave it first off about how we wanted things structured, the language, how we trained it in our own voice. So it's not writing in the no standard AI format. The other one that I use is Originality AI. It uses a totally different way of looking at things. And the uh, we're going to get a very different result here, I'll tell you now. I reckon... It's going to be like a 97. I haven't I haven't tested it, but just from past experience, I say this is going to come in. I'm just going to put these extra spaces here. Um, I reckon it's going to come in around about the the 97 AI generated mark. Do you have to get your content to 100% human? No, you don't. And many AI content detectors will even report 100% human written text as a component that there's a component of AI there. So don't get hung up on that. You just don't want to publish something where the detectors are coming back saying this is 97% or 98% AI generated. So let's see what, oh, and I've got plagiarism checking on here. So I'm burning extra credits where I don't have to, and it's taking longer than it should, but we will wait for this to finish. Okay. And as expected, it came back saying 98%. AI and 2% original. Okay. So big difference between the AI detectors and the more AI detectors you use, the more difference you're going to see and it's going to get really confused. But the ones that uh, I've seen recommended most around the YouTube channels and through different authors is this one, Content at Scale and also Originality.ai. Okay. And there'll be links for those in the prompt guide, which you can download from a link below this video in the description or from the button. Okay, so once I've done that step, so once I've, I've come through, I've made sure I've got rid of repetition, I've combined what I've had to combine, I've filled any gaps, then I paste it into another tool called Pro Writing Aid. This is a paid app. And what this does, it's very, this is, a Grammarly alternative. So if you've got Grammarly, like a pro version of Grammarly, you'll have all these features available to you as well. I know why we're getting these extra spacings in, it gets a bit annoying. But the reason why I like to use this particular tool when it comes to my edit, so this is the final edit, okay? So this is the final polish. So over here, we've got all this detail, okay? So the the grammar spelling, the, the style, so it's, it's bad, like there, you can see the little warning signs as to what has to be addressed. Readability, grade 13, that's really bad. Sentence variety, four, glue index. So basically, there's definitely 
a lot of work that we've got we've got to do to make this readable okay so as i said one of the biggest things the differences between ai generated content and human generated content is a variation of sentence length when when we write you know we sometimes use short punchy sentences sometimes even one or two word sentences and then a combination of of, of medium length to longer sentences whereas with ai the sentence length and structure is is pretty much uniform which is a giveaway for ai generated content and it's not it's not great to read either like great big long sentences that go on for lines and lines it's not great to read if i do the readability report on here you'll just see all these all these red lines it's, it's saying over here 11 very difficult to read paragraphs like how many paragraphs are in this thing like there's, there's not that many so basically the whole thing is hard to read so going through this process now i'm going to do a combination of manually rewording and reworking sentences and paragraphs then also using the inbuilt rephrasing tool inside of pro writing aid now when it comes to rephrasing there's also another free tool that you can use called quillbot and the free version allows you to paste in up to 125 words at a time and it rephrase i'll just show you very quickly what happens with this i have tried it before it, it it does it doesn't do a bad job it's just not my preferred tool but i'll, I'll show you anyway so if i come here and i so I pick up these two paragraphs here and I paste these into Quillbot and I say paraphrase. It will go off and it will rework the, the paragraphs for me. Okay. And then in certain situations, if you're not happy with the word it uses, the stress management, anxiety management, right? Now we've got the drop down coming here, but we've also got a, a rephrase option here. So this is how it's taken that across to this okay and that might be all you want to do but, but i'd like to have a little bit more control so i don't use this tool but it's there so what i want to do is firstly i'm going to look at if there's any way that i can rework any really long sentences and just break them up into into smaller sentences and the other thing too i've got things here you know i can just take the suggestions coming from my tool and I don't know and sometimes I'm, I, I leave it as is and I'm just going to come through because these are just words that aren't needed so just come through and just see see handles all right so we can come through and sometimes it just I don't know it's, it's double <laughs> it's double entering right so it comes through like that and then the other thing now I'm just going to read through many are stealing it can feel all right so it can feel overwhelming unfortunately there's help with issues and essential oils are one of them in this chapter we'll explore the power of essential oils and sleep issues see this is a very long sentence here so I'm just going to stop that and say we'll also look at how they can be a powerful tool for promoting well we won't do that sleep issues we're going to just say don't even just say they can be a powerful tool for power essential oils as sleep can be a powerful tool for promoting anything okay that looks good the other thing that i can do now is i can click on or just hover over this line here and it's going to ask me whether I want to have it rephrased and so once again that's a very long sentence and then I can just choose one of the rephrases to put in so as I said I, I use a combination of menu go, manually going through breaking down the the sentences into into smaller sentences reworking them reworking the paragraphs and then use a combination of the rephrasing tool as well just to rephrase things so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause the video because i don't want you to sort of sit here and wait for me to go through and do an edit on all of this but i'll pause the video and then i'll come back once i've 
done the done the rephrase and all that sort of stuff, and then we'll put it back through the AI detection software, and we'll also put it through a plagiarism check. Okay, I've gone through, done an edit, some rephrasing. I've reworked certain sentences and paragraphs, making shorter sentences, and just overall increase improving the readability. And you can see now that the readability is down to grade nine. It started off at grade 13. Sentence length has dropped the average sentence length when we started was 22. Now it's 16. We've basically got ticks in most of the most of the columns. So there's no more passive voice. So let's see. Oh, the other thing too is I you know, go go through and when I'm writing, because I always like to write in a conversational style, I never say you are, they are. It's always your, their, and that sort of stuff. And that also really helps not only with, with the flow of the reading, but also helps with the AI detection. So just as a matter of interest, we'll go through and we'll copy this new piece, which is probably shorter than the original because I did reduce a lot of sentence lengths and a lot of the extra words. We're going to come into here and I'm going, so before it started off, when it was straight out of ChatGPT, it was 51% human as far as content at scale. We're going to paste the edited version in okay and then we will run it and just see what happens well it's up to 59 percent that's interesting I, I would have thought that would have improved a lot more than that let's have a look at originality okay i'm going to turn plagiarism check off this time i'm tired of burning extra credits and i've actually made it worse you see, and this is this is why AI trying to get things past AI detectors is can do your head in. It can really do your head in. Like I've I've gone through and rewritten stuff, my own my own stuff, not even haven't gone anywhere near AI and it's come up saying the same thing that it's 99% AI. Maybe I've been reading so much AI that now I'm starting to write like it. I don't know. But at the end of the day. I would I would still work through this. I, I did this in a hurry just to give you some sort of you know, look at what's happening. Uh, it's also highlighting areas here. So if I went through and sort of reworked some of this here, research is shown all in all, make them part. So if I came back in here and I reworked, so where's this one here? So if I if I rephrase this, and then I I take this out because that was also highlighted. All right, it's saying that research. I just want to change that one more thing and just see what sort of what sort of effect we can have. Here we go. Research is showing. Okay, so just making those couple of changes. Let's see what happens now. And back into here, copy this out, copy this one in. Okay, so it's improving. It's jumped up again. What does originality IA have to say about this? Then the plagiarism check off, scan. <laughs> right now it's saying it's 100% AI. So really can't win with, with, with this one. So I think as we work with the different AI detectors, as I said, you're going to get a different answer from each different AI. I think the I think the most important thing is as long as as long as you go through rework the copy. Like I would have here, if I if this was my book and I was publishing it, I'd obviously spend a lot more time. I'd, I'd spend a lot more time personally, you know, manually rewriting sentences and that sort of stuff. But just for the purpose of this training that's just a good indication for you but as i said i i have actually rewritten sentences in here manually i've rephrased i've changed sentence structure and it's still and and originally the ai is still saying it's 100 percent ai whereas the whereas this one 
the, the more changes I make. So if I come if I come through and and address these these things here, like these little sentences that are, that, that are highlighted, if I address those, then obviously it's going to it's going to bring it up. So at least it's it's telling me what it's picking out as 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 AI content that I can go through and edit that. So that's the training. Once again, the prompt guide is in the description or link below this video. Um, just go through the process. And of course, the last thing that you do is there. there is a plagiarism checker as part of here. I'm not going to run a plagiarism check because it is a paid service through uh, pro writing aid so it, it costs me a little bit of money it costs me a dollar each time I run a, a plagiarism check so I'm, I'm not going to burn it there but obviously I'd run a plagiarism check to make sure that it's it's okay and then we, we stick it into the book so I hope you found the training useful if you've got any questions at all please don't hesitate to drop them into the comments or email me at tim at timcooper.au and I will address your questions in future videos.